time to move ahead with the next session that is about the Zoe chat. You heard about it uh, even in this morning keynote. It's a new component for Zoe. But what I will show you is uh, what's so appealing in general about chat ops, and then I will go to the what Zoe chat is or is becoming. Okay. So let's start with what's so appealing about chat ops, and let's clarify some terminology. In every enterprise, there are people that have different roles and most likely different skills, but even more important, uh, more and more people are working together from different locations. It is already six years that I work from home because I am the only one working in Rome, Italy, on the project I work. I work with people in China, in Germany, in the US, nobody in Italy. So I use the chat quite frequently to collaborate, to talk with my colleagues all over the world. And it's not only about me. I think uh, in every enterprise, the chat tools are becoming more and more present in our life, in our working life at least, but not only. Then there are the chatbots. Chatbots are the elements that you can add to the chat to interact with tools or to even more and more where you call a customer support, you get the chatbot that answers you. So in terms of terminology, you have the people, you have the chat tools, and you have the chatbots. ChatOps is a collaboration model that tries to integrate these three elements. So the people, the chat, and the chatbot. More in detail, what the chat technology does is to make the communication between people easier. What the ChatOps as a collaboration model is, is make the, the communication between people and tools all based on the chat tool that you have in your enterprise. So, why it is so successful? Because the chat technology is lightweight. It's already, as we said, it is already present in most of the enterprises. And even to talk like in our Zoe team, we are cross enterprises. We are working from different vendors, but we need to communicate and to talk each other quite frequently. And we use the chat to do that. <clears throat> and there is even the possibility to interact with machines. So as Zoe and the Open Mainframe project uh, um, we saw an opportunity to extend Zoe adding a chatbot. And uh, the incubator proposal was proposed back in uh, March this year. It was approved. And it is uh, one of the signs of, let's say, one of the reasons, I would say, of the success of Zoe. We always look for improving Zoe as a framework to make, basically, the ZOS platform less different from the other platforms, to make it more open but even more modern and accessible from every user. So the Zoe chat aimed to add to the mission statement that we're already having uh, the ability to interact with the ZOS and so gather information about the ZOS resources and issue command through a chat tool. So since uh, uh, when it was approved in the spring this year, the squad team was uh, staffed, let's say, created. And they are working very hard, and they are making great progresses. And indeed, uh, there is now a plan that we have in mind for our first version. We envision to have the technical preview already by October, in a month from now. And next week, uh, there will be a webinar that I will share with Mark, where we will go more in details on the different features, and we will possibly even show a demo of the Zoe chat. The content of the first version that we envision to have it available by March next year is about resource management. So it will be possible to uh, query jobs and data set information from the chart. And I have some book up later on. It will be possible even to um, query information about data set and even about Unix system services files. Now, here, what is in italic, uh, let's say, is not committed in the current plan. But we are working even to have the possibility to submit a job through a chat tool, as well as to cancel a job. Then it will be possible to issue MDS command, as well as to issue Zoe comma line command from the chat. What is the advantage? The main advantage is in a chat tool, you can create a chat channel. So you have multiple people looking at the same data at the same time. Because obviously, if you are alone, you can just use the Zoe command line. But if you want to, if you are investigating a problem, and you are the two of, the, of you that are 
that need to look at the same data. And one is based in Rome, Italy. The other one is based in China. Possibly having this data in a chat channel is more useful than just back and forth with emails and so on. Then you can even query for the error code on the US. I presented this deck already in Columbus at SHARE less than one month ago. And the link to the knowledge center with the error code meaning was one of the most appreciated features of the chat, of the Zoe chat. Yeah, because you know, not everybody knows every single error message of TOS. And then uh, we are working even to have the alerting in the Zoe chat, and you will see more in the next slide what it means. And obviously already in the first release, uh, we will have the extensibility of the Zoe chat. This is because uh, at the end of the story, yeah, sure, the Zoe chat will provide the basic uh, to interact with the, as you say, job, data set, unique system services file, to issue command, and so on. But we want to make it extensible, and we want to make it uh, the aggregator of the different chatbots. Every enterprise uh, is not single vendor. They have usually software from multiple vendors. And they could end up to installing many chatbots for the different vendors. What we want to do with Zoe Chat is to create a framework so you can add a plugin on the only one chatbot you will have installed on your chat tool. In the initial version, we will support Microsoft Teams, Slack, and Mothermoose. And we plan in the roadmap to add even additional uh, chat tool. So let me show you quite quickly the, the features. To, to manage the US uh, job, you, you can ask to the chatbot uh, with filters like the, the prefix, uh, the, to list the job that are on the system. And so you can uh, filter on the prefix or on the owner, and you will get in the chat a list of job with some available information on the job. Then you will have the option to select uh, <coughs> uh, one of the job, and uh, from, if you select one of the job, you will get the details on the specific job in the chat. So you can show it with other people that are in the same chat channel. From the job, you can see the error codes because this job abandoned, so was in error. And looking at the error code, as I said, I'm not an expert of all the error codes, so I can click on the error code and it will be opened the knowledge base page for the specific error code with all the explanation. More or less the same you can do with data set. So you can query the chatbot to have the, all the data set that respect the filters that you specify in the chat query. Then you can select uh, one specific data set and get the information, uh, the more information. And we will have a subset in the summary, but you can extend even to have more information on the data set. Or you can uh, click and get all the data members of that data set that you select in the drop down menu. And at the end, you can even uh, uh, look for a specific uh, uh, data member information. What I said, and what, again, in Columbus uh, was uh, highlighted as a very important feature, is the possibility to get alerts in the chat. And specifically, there were a couple of customers that raised their own scenario. One of them said to me, said to us, uh, you know what, we have a job that runs every hour, that basically check for long-running SQL query. If he found any long-running SQL query, it sends an email saying that SQL is running too long. It means that I have to check my email every hour to see if there is a problem. I would like to have the notification on my smartphone, like in a chat tool. It is what we envision with the Zoe chat. So the possibility to get alerts triggered by an event in the chat, those alerts can be sent to a channel of people, and so people then can collaborate and see what's happening, and possibly in the alert, you can have even a, a link or action to take from the chat itself. To allow this, we will, uh, we will have, as part of the Zoe chat, a data model, so every extender can uh, send alerts to the Zoe chat. In the data model, some of the fields will be required, like the priority, the severity, a description of the alert, 
and so many other fields to identify the, the location where the problem occurred and at what time the problem occurred. Then there are the instructions about to what channel you want to send the alert. It is decided from who sent the alert, so from the producer of the, let's say, event. And then at the end, the producer will be able even to add links that will appear at the end of the alert and possibly even custom fields to add additional information about the alert. So through this mechanism, uh, multiple products uh, or even custom solution Something has to go. Okay. Uh, so products or custom solution can send alerts to the Zoe chat and so to the people that are in the channel that you identified. A scenario that we envisioned well, is about uh, an operator get a, an alert from the, a monitoring tool, for example, Let's say to the operator that there is a, a, an ICPU consumption problem on a specific uh, system. The operator can, through the chat, list the job that are running on that system to see what job is causing this ICPU consumption. Look at the details of the job and possibly even look at the job log in the chat. Not everything will be available in the first version of Zoe chat. Possibly some of the features like the view, this job log will, be, will come later, but it is the overall scenario that we have in mind. And as you saw already in the previous presentation, in our roadmap for the Zoe chart, we have in mind even to have more integration with the other Zoe components. So in the first release, we have the major integration with the Zoe command line. So it will be possible to issue command directly from the Zoe chart to the Zoe command line. In the future, we want to have integration even with the Explorer, for example, or with the desktop, so you can launch in context the one or the other, for example, to go to the job log and see what happened to the specific job. However, once Annette, the operator, finished the, the, uh, her analysis and found that there is uh, something problematic on a specific job, it can interact with the subject matter expert directly in the chat showing what she found in the chat. Then the, the system programmer will be able, again, using the Zoe chat to see the, the data set and data set members uh, to locate the JCL that is underlying the job that is causing the problem. Possibly, it can even fix the problem in Zoe Explorer, for example, and then get back the uh, answer to, the, to an ad operator in the Zoe chat confirming that the, the problem was uh, fixed. So I was afraid to have too many slides, but possibly I was very quick. Do you have any question? Yes. out of the other Zoe component, it will be a different component. It will be at the same level, let's say, of the common line or the explorer or the desktop, and it will be possible to deploy it on your chat tool, and it will rely on the API mediation layer to interact with the ZOS file. So in the scenario that I showed you, for example, to query for the job, it will interact with the API mediation layer to get the data about the job. So it is at the same level, let's say, of the command line or the desktop or the explorer. One question that usually is raised is about the uh, security, the authentication, the authorization. So Mark will correct me if I'm saying something wrong, but at the end of the story, the chat user will authenticate to the chat tool as usual. But then, the first time it will issue a command that will interact with mainframe, it will be prompted to provide the mainframe credentials. Those mainframe credentials will be matched on the mainframe, as usual, 
and a token will be returned to the chat tool, or the, there are different options, and then it will be used for the follow-on queries in the chat tool. So the security is always maintained, let's say, on the main frame. Every, the initial authentication or the authorization, so are you authorized to perform that command or to see that files, is based on the profile that you have on main frame. It's just another interface to interact with the, with the resources. Okay. Any other question? Well, um, our plan is to, in, so the, the question is uh, if we have any plan to integrate other uh, providers of information like the Google. Our plan is, uh, sure, we will uh, extend uh, the resource management in terms of actions that you can do on the ZOS jobs or, or on the set unit system service file. We don't have plan to extend uh, the um, resources that you can manage, like as, uh, with Zebra, unless it, it becomes, uh, let's say, a Zoe component. So focus more on making it extensible. And so you can add a plugin to the Zoe chart to interact with other resources on ZOS or with other tools. Because at the end, uh, as I said, we want to make it the framework uh, extensible so you don't need to install multiple chatbots, but you have just one. So we expect vendors to create the the chatbot as a plugin of Zoe chat instead of standalone to leverage, for example, the authentication authorization that will be already available there, to leverage the integration with the other components of Zoe. In the roadmap uh, that was highlighted briefly earlier, um, what we will have is more an artificial intelligence infusion in the Zoe chat to make it more. Um, able to answer to your question in a more proper way, leveraging the artificial intelligence. I call the same thing, but you run even the Zoe command line. You get the output. You copy-paste in an email that you have from Zoe. You are doing the same thing. So in the chat channel, yes, you are authorized to access that information. You know what, what other people are in the channel. And so it's your decision to share or not the output of that. Because otherwise, you, you can imagine, it would become too complex to match the authorization of all the people that are in the channel. Any other question? So next Wednesday, there will be a webinar uh, focused on the Zoe chat. As I anticipated, there will be even a demo of the Zoe chat at the point where we are. There is the list of resources that they are always... Uh, valid for all the Zoe projects and components. And one request that I have for you is to work with us. So it is the, the first version. We are just building these components. And what we are doing, uh, the, the design team that is a, a part of Zoe, is conducting some usability tests. Usability test means a one hour uh, session where you will uh, navigate through mockup, and you can influence, basically, the design of Zoe chat. If you are interested in joining, you can contact Phoebe or myself. And if you are interested in general to join the, the Zoe chat, you can uh, join the Slack channel Zoe chat. That's I thank you for your attention. I will be around for the rest of the day. If you have any questions even later, just come to me or to Mark or Around Zoe. Thank you.